As you've been seeing, like in this one, right? Often these later properties, they kind of rest on the earlier properties as their foundation, okay? So before we get to 14, um, I need 13, which is why it's immediately previous. So let's have a look at this. Okay, now let's look at this one. This is really quick and it's a beautifully elegant proof. And in fact, it uses something that we learnt, uses a tool that we learned from calculus. Um, this is not 13. This is not 13. It doesn't look like 13 anyway, because 13 has to do with a tangent. And I have not drawn a tangent. I have drawn a... Secret. I've drawn a secant, right. But a tangent is really a special kind of secant. It's a secant where the two points where you cut the circle, where they happen to coincide, where they sit on top of one another. So tangents and secants, if you remember back to when we were doing first principles, they're like sort of cousins with each other. So therefore, I'm going to get to 13 through this guy. I want to get um, this line here. I've labeled it T for tangent. I want to become a tangent, right? So therefore, what I'm going to have is I want P to approach Q, right? So I'm going to consider this limit, right? Now, as that happens, I've got this angle up in here formed at the center that's subtended by PQ, okay? But I also have OPQ, which is isosceles. You okay with that? Okay, so therefore, OPQ and OQP both being equal, what are the sizes of those angles? Or what, are the, what is the size of each angle? Both the same. Think about it, right? Yeah, so this is theta. Right. So this whole thing's got to add up to 180 minus, sorry, it's all, all got to add up to 180. So these two have to add up to 180 minus theta. Do you agree with that? But I've got to split it for two angles, yeah? So what I'm getting really is 90, 90 degrees minus. minus half theta. You okay with that? And they're the same. Okay. So now, therefore, as P approaches Q, what happens to that angle theta subtended at the center? theta is going to approach a value as well, right? It's going to approach zero. It's going to get narrower and narrower and narrower. Can you see that? Can you see it in your mind's eye sort of coming together? So theta is going to approach zero, right? So as theta approaches zero, what's going to happen to these guys? 90 minus theta on two will approach 90, right? So therefore, I can say angle O, P, T will be, whoops, approaches, now you agree. You see that? So therefore, this is what I have. This is the special case where the two points P and Q, they Q, P and Q, they coincide. They're right there, and so they're both equal to ninety degrees. So here's the picture. Okay. Well, maybe. All right. So it's a marvelous little proof. It's really, I think it's quite beautiful. Uh, a lot of these circle pro properties can be proved in very elegant ways. Uh, and I gave you a big clue by leading in with this guy. I gave you a big clue. Okay. Let's just remember what we're trying to show. Read it, right? It's a bit of a mouthful. The angle between a concurrent tangent and chord. Pause. Tangent. Chord. Right? So that's when they're concurrent. Okay, at that point of contact on the circumference. The angle between the concurrent tangent and chord, by the way, you will have noticed there are two. There are two. This is an angle between the tangent and a chord, but there's another chord over here. You see that? So there's another one. I can do this either way. In fact, one of the important things that you'll be having to spot later on is sometimes you like one, one angle between this tangent chord and the alternate segment looks really obvious, and then you don't remember to look at the other side, which is just as useful. But this is the angle. I'm talking about right now between the tangent and the chord. And what I want to show is it's equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Segment, alternate segment. So there's that angle in the alternate segment that I'm after. Okay, so those two green things, that's what I'm trying to prove. Okay? Oh, wait, so does it work with other shapes apart from triangles? Do you mean like a quadrilateral and that kind of thing? 
No, because there's too much, as you'll see in a second, there's too many, um, there's too many variables. Too many things you could possibly change. Whereas here, it's like, once you've drawn the triangle, it's locked in. All right, so I gave you this big clue, right? That somehow this is going to be pulled in. So what I'm gonna do is, at this point of contact, I can draw, I can draw a radius just like that, but I'm gonna go one better and I'm going to draw a diameter. Now I've drawn it in such an orientation that I've got my tangent going that way. So it's pretty easy just to, um, draw the diameter and it's just going to be vertical at that point. Okay, so I'll do my best. There we go. Okay. So it's a diameter. It's a radius to indicate that it's a diameter and not just some random chord. I put a big fat dot on it to indicate the center. Okay. Now I've got to get from over here all the way around to over there, right? So how am I going to do it? What do I know? I've just drawn the diameter, so it's perpendicular to this radius. Sorry, this tangent. You agree? Perpendicular. So I need, I need a bit of language here, right? So what should we call this angle between the tangent and the chord? What would you like to name it? Alpha. Alpha, alpha will do. Alpha. Okay. So I have alpha over here, and I have 90 over here. So what does that mean? Yeah, good. Right nestled in there, I have 90 minus alpha. By the way, it's 90 degrees. We will get onto the um, the other angles in time. So I've got that angle there. That's nice. But what am I going to do with that angle? Okay. And how is it going to be related to this one? Okay. There's a 90 degree here. Right angle here. Okay. There's another right angle in this diagram. I just haven't drawn it in yet. Right? Yeah. What do you see? Yep. Oh wait, this one over here? This one over here? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, you, you can come over here. Yeah, okay, so you've got, you've got a couple of different options. Now, here's the thing, right? You, you can go in many directions. Mark, where were you going to go in? Uh, center to where? Here. Over here. Okay, so I could join this up. That's going to give me some, that's going to give me an isosceles triangle over here. You can go there, but the reason I would use the isosceles triangle that's awesome! I get it! It's actually because of that guy. Now this is why I drew a diameter. What? Rather than, it's okay. It will, it will probably just be a different direction to get to the same thing. At least I hope. Right? Okay. Now if I've got that angle over there. Okay. Hmm. Look carefully. Right? I see the solution. I have, a, I have an angle here. It's not a quadrilateral. I'm an angle over here. Can you tell me? Can you tell me what the relationship is between this angle and this one? What are those? Those two red angles. Do you see it? Those two red angles are standing on my red arc. Oh, you okay with that? Okay, so so this guy is ninety degrees minus alpha. And then that's alpha. But but I know that the angle in a semicircle is ninety degrees. Yeah, hold on. There we go. Yes. Alpha. What's your other way? Um, so you know how Mark was like, you draw a line from the center to there, right? Yep. You prove it's an isosceles triangle, right? Which one? So you, you prove that that little one. Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah. So then that's yep. 90 minus theta over there, right? Yep. And because they're on the same arc, the angle that's on the circumference is going to be half the angle at the center. So, the angle so you're talking about this one and oh, which one? That one, that one, and the other one will add up to 180. You mean this one over here? Yeah. yeah. Yep, so what's this? 180. Oh, sorry, it's alpha, isn't it? Yeah. Alpha, alpha, alpha. Yep, so what's this? 2 alpha, and so the other one's alpha. Yeah. So, so just in case you didn't catch that, right, which was just... Literally, it's really funny. There are so many circle puns you can do. So we're sort of going around in circles, right? But, um... <laughs> I got there, I got there by using, taking advantage of this 90 degrees and this 90 degrees. Right, 90 degree angle. Okay, and there's that symmetry there. That's so cool. But the other way you can go is, alright, so you have a, an isosceles triangle here. That just gives you the angle sum, right? And this angle is at the center, corresponding to this angle is at the circumference, standing on, I'll draw it in for you, standing on this green arc over here. Bam. You want to talk about dead circles? 
stops right here. Okay, you see what we mean by like the reason why this list is so intimidatingly long is because of how freaking awesome circles are. And it's like I'm just gonna randomly draw lines and ta-da, amazing properties just emerge. Okay, so this is a really important one though. I'm emphasizing it because it is traditionally hard to spot. It is easy to spot when you're like, that's the one I'm looking for. But when you have a list of 20 that are all up in your head and you're like, oh, which one is it? Okay, um, this, is, this becomes a little more challenging, right? So you have to spot it. Um, often it's in that drawing the diagram. Sometimes you need to redraw the diagram. Like this is messy now, right? Do you agree with that? There's all sorts of stuff on there. Sometimes you have to redraw it with less features on it. So that, right? So that, <laughs> the angle in the alternate segment becomes more obvious when there's less stuff there. Okay, so constructions solve problems, but they also introduce problems. They make things harder to see. Okay.